Hey, good morning, everyone. The voice Pastor Q. Thank all you guys for joining us again for our 11 a.m. service here at the, uh, 116 T Street Northeast. Thank you guys for joining us this morning at the Harborside Hotel for our 9 a.m. service. And I uh, thank you for you guys for being a part of that broadcast this time. We're going from our 116 T Street location where God has given us the ability to be able to have a place of two services. So we thank God for allowing us to come over here and teach and preach the word. This time we will have our inspirational message going forth by Connie Cuffin. And she will come up this morning and give us our inspirational message of the day. Come on up, Tom. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome morning. to T Street Word Movers. Once again, you're here in the name of Jesus, in the house of the Lord. I'm going to be reading the inspirational word today. It's going to be coming from Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 through verse 2. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Make it attractive. The story is told of a young boy who during a bygone era was aboard a passenger train attempting to make money selling apples. He made his way through the train car saying, apples, apples, anyone, anyone want to buy an apple? When he got to the rear of the car, he still had a bag full of apples and no money. A gentleman who noticed his plight took him aside and asked to see one of the apples. He proceeded to go to the front of the train polished it conspicuously with a napkin and then walked down the aisle eating the apple and commenting on how delicious and refreshing it was. Then he told the boy to try it again. This time he sold every apple. The difference, the apples have been made attractive to the potential customers. This story can remind us of one way we can interest others in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make it attractive to them. Show them the differences that made in your own lives. That is best done by following the words of Paul in Colossians 4 5. Be wise, he said, in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. If we show kindness, love, and compassion to others, those who observe us will wonder why. And that may give us an opening to tell them about the beauty of God's love for them. Just like our testimonies, make it attractive so others can come to God also. Amen. Thank you, Connie. Thank you for that beautiful reading. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for that this morning for Connie. I just thank God, man, for all our members and leaders. All um, God has put the ministry together now to operate our positions. Amen. Amen. Well, turn me to the book of Malachi, chapter 3. After praise and worship this morning, we listened to a song, Rain. God has uh, given me a word about that this morning. Um, you know, the great scripture of teaching in Malachi, chapter 3, where God says that he will open up the windows of heaven and Pour us out a blessing that we shall not be able to receive. And knowing there's, there's great scripture and teaching about our cup running over, meaning that God has given us more than enough, right? But I want to teach on how we get to that point because a lot of people have taught this scripture wrong. And I want to teach it without manipulation. I want to, treat, I want to teach it with the uh, purity and great teaching that the way it's to be taught. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us with this word this morning. Allow your word to be able to go forth, oh, Father God. Allow me to teach and preach your word, oh, Father God. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. This scripture is normally taught to me, I believe, with uh, manipulation to get people to give money in churches. And what they preach in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, the first scripture teaches, it says, Will a man rob God? I mean, you know what it means to rob, right? I mean, rob means to be able to take away from somebody, right? And it says a question mark, will a man rob God? And yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what, have, in what way have we robbed you? And, and, and God is saying, you want to, can a man rob me? And you're asking, how have I robbed you? And he says, um, in tithes and in offerings, right? He says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Let me start right there. God says that he's being robbed, right? Let me tell you why God says he's being robbed. God says he's being robbed not because you're not giving money to the church, great teaching. God says he's being robbed because he has given to you to be a blessing, but you're not. Listen to what I'm saying. Now, most church churches teach this to give the money into the church, Frank, for tithes and offerings, right? But the way it should be taught, that sometimes I give tithes and offerings outside of my church. How do I do that, Pastor Q? Well, sometimes I go to the store and I have a little bit more 
and I help somebody else, I buy somebody a breakfast sandwich, I buy somebody a coffee, I give somebody something that I have more of. You, you have something that I have a lot of these things. You ever give away something, you say, you know what, I have a lot of this, I'm going to give something this away because I got a lot of this going on. <laughs> you know, tithes and offerings are not just monies and funds put inside of envelopes and through PayPal and Cash App and churches. Um, tithes and offerings is also me giving and being a blessing yes. where I have been blessed. Yes. Yes. But see, the church preaching that all the money got to come to the church. That's not great. That's not always the teaching of tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings, when you helping somebody, taking somebody to the store, giving up your time, allowing God to be able to be a blessing unto somebody else through what He has blessed you with. So tithes and offerings is me taking the abundance of that which I have, or what they call the overflow. It's sad that churches. Only overflow they have is the overflow room. Yeah. Yeah. Get blessed. Amen. Only overflow they have is the overflow room. Yeah. Yeah. No overflowing into the community. No overflowing helping everybody else. Because see, sometimes, let me tell you what I've learned. I got people when, who don't tithe a lot to the church, they help a lot in the community. Get blessed yeah. what I just said. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I got more people. I got people who don't tithe a lot into the church, but help a lot into the community. Amen. I may not give a lot to my church, but there's a lot of stuff I'm not doing in my church that I'm doing outside of my church that the church don't know about. Yeah. But when they look at how much I give, it don't look like a lot. But I do some stuff outside my church that my church don't know about. Yeah. I didn't help people with some money for their rent, for their gas. I didn't help people get some money so they can get some groceries and things like that. Amen to that. Don't nobody in the church know that I do those type of things. But when I don't give money to my church, I look like a bad person. But nobody sees the work that I do outside of my church when I'm loaning money, when I'm giving people rides, when I'm cash out people, money that's short. But it's all, my money ain't no good because it ain't coming to your church. Matter of fact, he says this. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Look at what God is saying. God says, I need your tithe. Back then and then, you know, they were farmers and things of that nature, right? So what God was asking for, he says, listen, if I'm blessing your harvest, and I'm giving you a harvest, right, from what you have sown, I'm giving you an abundance, I'm asking for some of that to be able to use because God says, I'm not physically on your planet. And the only Christ that people may see is the Christ that's in you. God says that since you have um, become a living sacrifice unto me, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God says, since you have become a servant of mine, right? And since your life is no longer your own, do you mind if I use some of what you have, some of which I have given you to help somebody else? Amen. 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 That's what God is saying. Yeah. See, I had to learn that when, because I used to get bitter around the times of tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. I didn't like giving my money to the church. I'm just like you. Yeah. Tithes and offerings is a tight place in church for, right? Yeah. Because I don't see where my money is going. Yeah. Right? So what we've been trying to do is get out and help more people in the community understand that God didn't bless me to give all my extra to my church. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you something, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes God blesses me to help somebody that don't go to church get blessed with. Yeah. Come on now. Sometimes I got people in my surroundings that don't attend church that I help every day. Yeah. How many people you loaning money to? Yeah. How many people you giving rides to? How many people you taking time out your day to listen to them sob and boo yeah. and yeah. encouraging them? Yeah. Yeah. You got to understand what the tithe and offering is. It's a, it's the tithe and the offering is not just my funds, monetary value. It's me making myself available yeah. For God. When I came out with the whole concept of Pastor Q preach for free, the concept was I was making myself a servant to God to get paid by Him. Not that I was preaching for free. I was getting paid, I get paid to preach even if you don't tithe because I'm a contractor. I'm a disciple. So my money going to be right whether you give or not. And that's what people feel to realize. I'm a contractor. I get, listen, some contractors are paid before they show up. I didn't show up to church to get paid. I was paid before I got here. You got to understand the difference between your pastor and me, a disciple of God. He shows up to church to get paid. I was paid before I got there. You got to understand what I'm saying. 
already paid. Before, before I show up to preach, I'm paid. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because I'm a disciple. Yeah. He, my God rewards me, not off how I preach, but because of my worship. Amen. Because of my service. I went to a trans uh, event yesterday. You know what? For the trans community, for people who are transforming their lives, men becoming women, and men, and men and women becoming men. I went to an event yesterday. I was blessed by it here at the event. Guess what? I was there for free. Yeah. But I'm not. To, I'm not saying that to boast about it. I'm saying that that I've un, I'm learning to understand this as a pastor. There's more to my ministry than inside of this church. Yeah. There's some places I gotta go and show up for free yeah. in the natural, but I'm being paid to be there. You don't know yeah. that? Yeah. Somebody said, Pastor, it was so good for you to show up here, man. Listen, I'm being paid to be here. You don't know it. My God is gonna reward me. Guess what? I'm showing up for him. Yeah. I show up for my God. Sometimes I show up for free to places to help people and support people that don't support me. It's the worst feeling in the world to support yeah. people that don't support you. Yeah. But you know what? I got paid for going. Yeah. I ain't showed up to a place yet. I ain't been paid. I didn't need funerals for free. And nobody in the family paid me. But God paid me that week. Yeah, That's because I'm a disciple. He said, listen, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's to take care of things yourself. Don't worry about what you should eat. Don't worry about what you should drink. Don't worry about what you will wear. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things. Be, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. You must understand when you are in covenant with God, God pays you. See, the problem is, the Bible says, do not go weary and well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. Yeah. See, when you have a real calling in your life of God and you serve God, it don't always come with monetary value. Yeah. That's why most people got off of this calling. Mm -hmm. I, I, most people have closed their church down because they didn't get the monetary value. Yeah. Not realizing that you should have been comfortable preaching for one person yeah. as you preaching yeah. for 100 persons. Yeah. You got to understand what your calling is. What is your service about? If you serving God for monetary value, yeah. when monetary value drop up, you're going to stop serving. Yeah. I don't know what you are. I don't know if you are a member of a church or you are disciples. Disciples do it all day long. Yeah. Church members serve until church starts, until church is over. Disciples, we do it all day long. Yeah. It's the difference between me and you. We ain't the same. You, sir, you go to God, you go to church to serve God. I'm a disciple. I wake up and pray. The last thing I do is pray. Discipleship. We're always doing church stuff even when the church doors is closed. That's discipleship. We are not the same. God's disciples go everywhere. Church people can't go everywhere. They can barely go to the liquor store. Disciples go to clubs. Disciples will go anywhere God sends them. Disciples don't limit themselves to Bible study and yeah. Sunday service. They yeah. go out places. They meet people. Yeah. Amen. That's when you're a disciple. When you haven't allowed your relationship with God to stop you from going places that's frowned upon. Yeah, yeah you're not a disciple of God. You, you play in church. Yeah. You only do it when the doors are open. I do it when the doors are closed because I get paid to do it that way. Yeah. Amen. You got to understand People show up for God looking for money. No, no, that's not what it's about. Look what he said in Malachi. How have I robbed you? God says that you have robbed me with tithes and offers. You have robbed me because you go to church, but you have been giving me of your time. God says, I really don't want your money. He says, what I do want is a percentage of what I have given you. Understand the story of the teachers of Cain and Abel, Right? The, the thing about Cain and Abel was that Cain kept everything he had and then what he had, what was left over, that he gave to God. Abel gave God his first, his best. Because listen, God gave unto him. How many of us know that everything I have don't belong to me? It belongs to God. And since it belongs to God, this is not a message to get you to give, that I should have no problem giving God his. But can I teach you that a lot of pastors and preachers don't teach this? That your level of tithing is a representation of your level of delivery and your level of growth. 
Can I teach you if I just come off the street going and I'm in debt, it's going to be hard for me to come to the church and give like I want to give because my level is just not there to trust God when I have all these bills. Can somebody say, get blessed by that? Yeah, amen. See, when I'm a newborn Christian, it's hard for me to give what they say I'm supposed to be giving because I just come out of debt or I'm in still in debt though I'm serving God. Yeah, I want to give God what I feel like he should have. They say it to him, but then I went to the New Testament. God says he loves a cheerful giver. You know what God was saying with that scripture? He was saying, I'd rather get the dollar and you feel good about it. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't, Frank, he said, I'd rather get the dollar, right? And you feel good about it than to get the hundred and you walk out upset. Yeah, amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. God said, I'd rather you gave the dollar. This is what my God said. This is how I know him, Frank. He says, I'd rather you give me something that doesn't cause you to have an attitude about it. Yeah. That you wanted to give me. Yes. You know, you know, you know the thing about Christmas and the thing about birthdays is that there's two types of people that get you a gift. Okay? There's people who was excited to go out and get you something and say, hey man, I got you something nice. Then there was the people that say, I had to get you something because you got me something. I ain't want to show up without nothing. Right. Two right. type of givers, right? right. Yeah. Some people, get, you was at the Christmas party and somebody wasn't going to get you nothing but just so happened they put their little hand in that bag and drew your name out. I got to get him something because they got me something. And they showed up with something from $5 World. What's the name of the store? <laughs> Five and below. And here it is, you done went to Macy's and got them something nice. And the gift exchange looked wrong. Yeah. Here it is, you got me a $90 gift and I got you something from five below. Don't that make you feel the, I ain't know you were going to. If I knew you were going to do all that, then I would have, hold up, listen. If I knew you were going to do that, Gwen, what would I would have did? I would have matched you. Oh, listen what, listen what the Spirit yeah. of the Lord is saying. God, God saying, match me. Right. Oh, wow. Right. Match me. Yeah. God said, listen, Cain doesn't match me, but Abel what? He matches me. Yeah. He gives, come on now. He gives based off of the relationship he has with me. He's matching me. He ain't just giving me what he want me to have. He giving me what I supposed to have. Amen. Amen. He put some... He put some thought into my gift because I put some thought into his gift. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son and whoever believed him should not perish and ever left life. God says when I gave Jesus, I didn't give you one of those raggedy angels I had all the time. I gave you the best of what I had. Listen what God is teaching. So tithes and offers ain't about money. Yeah. I, beseech you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mercy God, you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. God wants my service. Yeah, amen. It's not about my money. He wants my service. Amen. Even when I don't have money, he wants me to still serve. Amen. Listen, learn to show up to places for free. Because God will pay you. He's going to reward you for that. See, a lot of times, you know, the thing about it is, is that <laughs> in ministry, this is great truth and great teaching. Pastors, we receive proposals, Right? I've had people call me, Pastor Q, how much for you to do the funeral? Now, because I, and here's great, this is me, right? This is how I've done, I'm learning to, I'm growing in this area too, but I've also learned in this area. I say, give me a love offering, right? Let me, let me tell you why I say that at times. Because I know my potential, right? Yeah. And I know the anointing that's on my life. Mm -hmm. So, I would rather show up to the funeral for free than to be lowballed and don't do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, let me teach you why. Yeah. I know my anointing. I know my power in God. Yeah. I know that wherever I speak, I change lives. Yeah. Yeah. So though the family can't afford me, because they didn't pay everybody else, yeah. Yeah. this is an opportunity for me to serve. Yeah. You see what I'm saying, Connor? Huh? It's, a, it's an opportunity because guess what? Who knows if I go preach and one person gets saved, that soul worth more than two, three hundred dollars they will get anyway. You gotta get blessed by great teaching. See, I wanted three, four 
hundred to do the funeral, right? Yeah. But if I show up and didn't get the three, four, five hundred I supposed to get, if one person got saved, yeah. the Bible said that the angel in heavens rejoice yeah. when one person repents. Yeah. Yeah. So is it safe to say, when I didn't get paid for going, but somebody received salvation, yeah. what is it worth? Is the five hundred worth more than the salvation, yeah. or is the salvation yeah. worth more than the five hundred? Only disciples talk like that. Yeah. I'm not like them dudes. Yeah. They don't they don't show up for nothing. Yeah. Because they yeah. forgot what the calling was. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor won't show up for marriage council, won't show up to do your wedding, won't show up to yeah. do the funeral, won't show up to none of that without money. Yes. Yeah. 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 See, I show up because I'm looking for an act of God to show up wherever I show up at. So what I didn't get paid the money I got. I took somebody's life. And I'm gonna get rewarded for that. Sometimes as ministry, we get caught up in looking at how much the church is earning. More than how much the church is developing. Yeah, amen. That's great teaching, right? Yeah. How much we make it. Yeah. But how much difference are we making? Get blessed by the yeah. word, right? Amen. Sometimes, you, oh, oh, listen. Sometimes you make all the money, but don't make a difference. Good Amen. God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes I made a lot of money, but didn't make a difference. Yeah. Sometimes I made a little bit of money and made a difference. Yeah. Sometimes all y'all doing is making money, y'all ain't making a difference. God says you're making money or you're making a difference. I want to make a difference. Yeah. Amen. We ain't the same. Yeah. You making money, I'm making a difference. Yeah. I make a difference when I put more people in heaven than you. Yeah, yeah. I boast. I boast on that. Yeah. I teach more people than you. I boast on that. Yes. Yeah. My members know what to do when they leave here. I boast on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Word movers. Members can't be back. They, 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 they listen. Mm. You, you can't go listen. A real word mover minister member. Mm -hmm. They, they, they won't sit up on no foolish teaching. A real, a real member of word movers. I tell you that when they come here, they learn something. Amen. They got something that they leave with something. Yeah. People don't leave my church feeling good, they leave feeling yeah. empowered. Yeah. Yeah. People leave your church feeling good, they leave here feeling empowered. Yeah. I'm tired of leaving church feeling good and then way off. Yeah. Yeah. Give me something to empower me during yeah. the week. Yeah. Give me something I can go back to. Yeah. Read out the Bible for Christ's sake. Yeah. Don't just make me feel so good and make an expectation for something and then I run into a problem. The Bible says when he talks about the sow and the seed and how the difference of them received the word. Some was received on good ground and some fell on solid ground and some took root. And it said it basically was giving you the uh, uh, the manifestation of every individual once they received the word. He says some people received the word with joy and all feeling all good. And then soon something happened. They don't know what to do because it, it, it hit them. And then something happened. It went away. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. You know what somebody told me the other day? They said, Pastor Q, I got to go to church Sunday because I feel good when I go to church. I said, that's a good thing. But if you were taught you feel good all week, get blessed. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. I don't want to go to churches that make me feel good while I'm there. Yeah. I need a word that gives me blessed assurance all week. Yeah. Yeah. You know that's a difference? I'm tired of churches that make me feel good, but, but when I leave, I don't have no assurance. Amen. Blessed assurance. Being able to have something to stand on and, and having something to trust in. Amen. That's the blessed assurance. Not just feeling good while I'm there. Yeah. You know what? When I was in school, we used to have these things called pep rallies, right? Mm -hmm. And the pep rally was designed to get the people motivated, pumped up. Now, that's what churches have become. Yeah, yeah. Pet rallies. Yeah. 
chilly. We get excited. We chill. We, we sing. We dance. And go out there and lose. Yeah. Do you know that the pep rally doesn't mean you're going to win the game? Mm -hmm. It was to what? Inspire. Encourage. To motivate. Yes. I, don't, I didn't come here to encourage, inspire, or motivate you. Jesus was not a motivational speaker. Learn. Jesus was not a motivational speaker. Nobody left Jesus for, hey, we got it. No, no, no. He was a teacher. Yeah, Can I teach you there's a difference between motivational speakers and people that actually teach? Yeah. Motivational speakers leave you feeling good. Hey, see, I tell you what. You can feel good about yourself but still not understand this, how things are going to work out. Yeah. You can feel real good about yourself. I can empower you. All day long to feel good about yourself. But guess what? Motivational speaking makes me feel good about myself. True teaching helps me feel good about God. Get blessed. Yeah. 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 I don't need to be motivated. Yeah. I need to know how to feel good about what God is doing and trust in him. I don't need to work out, walk out of here feeling motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants somebody to move. I left church and I feel so much better. That's motivation. Yeah. yeah. You should have been feeling, listen, he talks about a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. To be anxious about nothing, everything by prayer, supplication, making your requests made known to God. And he should give you a peace that was surpassing all understanding. It doesn't mean that um, God takes away the bad things. It says he gives me peace about it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, you got to be, listen, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't have you to come here to motivate you about what's coming. I have you come, come here to bring to make you at peace about what's going on. Yes. Look at the yes. difference of teaching. Amen. Con, they motivate people about what's coming. Yes. I'm having you to be at peace about what's going on. Yes. Amen. Amen. Most pastors and preachers are preaching your deliverance, your removal out of something. Yes. All the time, Jesus has taught to have peace in the midst of it. Yeah. 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 Oh, you yeah. preaching to bring me out. Yeah. He's preaching, though, to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to keep you inside of it. Yeah. Give you peace inside of it. Yeah. Hey, everybody's preaching about change is going to come. Mm -hmm. Bad teaching. Yeah. Sounds good, though. Yeah. Yeah. Change should be happening. Wrote a song. I'm waiting on my change to come. Nah, uh uh. I'm gonna change in this storm. Yes, amen. Amen. See, you must understand when the disciples were on the boat, they changed in the storm. Yeah. What do you mean they changed? Well, they they saw who Jesus was in the storm. But they didn't have faith. That's why it says, Oh, you have little faith. We had to calm the winds and the waves. But he changed them in the storm. Now, here's the thing. He calmed the storm, but they still had to go from one side to the other. He didn't stop it from high. Listen, only, I'm going to tell you what, man. One of the biggest uh, misteachings in the Bible is that when Jesus calmed the storm, right, that is not what he wanted to do. He did it. Because their faith wasn't in the right place. Mm, yeah. Listen, listen. What, why, why do I say that? Because he had them to go through a storm because he wanted them to have peace inside of it. Yeah. But they didn't have peace until he calmed it. Yeah. That's not what he wants to do. People say, um, Lord, take away the storm and I'll have peace. But he teaches, I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. You know what that's saying? If I'm giving you peace that passes all understanding, that means how do you have peace in a boat that you're supposed to be panicking in? Hmm. You see the teaching in that? Yes. He says, how can you have peace in a boat that has water coming in it and the waves? Were, how can you have peace? That's why he says, my peace I give unto you. My peace I live unto you. My peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you. I give you peace not as the world giveth. I give him perfect peace who stayed on thee. He said, listen, peace is not because I've made something better. Peace is being at peace with what's going on. Yeah, amen. Yeah. You 
see what I'm saying, Frank? The thing about it is, you know, here's the saying I've been hearing all week about the, the Kobe Bryant situation. Everybody always say, rest in peace, rest in peace. Did you really know what you're saying when you say that? You stop saying that if you knew what that meant. When you say rest in peace, you, you say that as if the person has gone somewhere and their peace is going to be shaken up or troubled. Listen to what you're saying. Rest in peace. So when they die, are you saying that you don't want them to be disturbed? Listen to what you're saying when you say that, right? You say something like, oh, rest in peace. What does that mean? That you mean that they sleep and don't wake up? You're saying it wrong. I'm saying it wrong. Resting in peace is, a story, is, is something for the living and not for the dead. But you keep saying it to the dead people. How can you rest in peace when you're dead, you're asleep? You can't be bothered unless you're waking up. Jesus said that um, he gone to awaken Lazarus. Only he could awaken Lazarus. They, they said Lazarus was dead. Jesus said Lazarus is not dead. He's asleep. God said that he put Adam into a deep sleep. People say he was at peace. He was dead. He was asleep. The peace of God represents this. The peace of God is that nobody can wake me up but him. Jesus, at one point, was in the bottom of the ship, at the, at the, uh, at the helm of the ship, sleeping. During the storm, why was he sleeping? He was demonstrating what? Peace. Peace. Amen. How can you sleep when you're drowning? I'm at peace. At peace doesn't mean somebody's dead and gone. Peace means that what's going on around me does not bother me. There's a saying, I'm unbothered. Hold up. Peace that surpasses up all understanding is in representation of me being what? Unbothered. You have to learn. Listen, I'm not asking God to remove bad people out of my life. I'm asking God when to teach me how to be unbothered. Yeah. I want to go to work and be unbothered. Yeah. I want to be un unbothered in my friendships and the people that I communicate with that try to do stuff. I want to be unbothered by your post, though I know your post is about me. I want to be unbothered about what you say about me, even though I know you're talking about me. I got to get to a place where I'm just unbothered yeah. about how you feel yeah. about me. Yeah. And that's not your fault. That's my fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's my fault that I'm bothered. Yeah. It's my fault that I care too much. Yeah. Right. God, help me to be what? Unbothered. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the peace of God. Yeah. Unbothered. Not caring about what they say, what they yeah. think, how they feel. Yeah. You don't have God's peace when you yeah. worry about that. Yeah. That's why he says this, I give you perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. The peace of God yeah. is me being unbothered. Yeah. Can I tell you that God puts you in out around chaos so we can develop the endurance or the tolerance to learn to be at peace? Yeah. You know what happens to us? Every time God allows something to happen, you ask God to be moved out of places where you're bothered. Yeah. Just to get to move to another place to be bothered again. Yeah. So you say, yes, yeah. well, guess what? I, I figured it out, friend. I says, hey, God is not going to remove the storm, so I got to learn to live with it. Yeah. 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 Hey, Frank, my family ain't going to get no better now. The job ain't going to get no better. Yeah. The spirits ain't going to get no better. Yeah. I'm an anointed vessel of God. They're going to keep on coming. Amen. I have to learn to accept yes. that my anointing yes. and my calling is always going to bring people that dislike me. Amen. It ain't going to get no better. Yeah. Hey, they're not going to start liking me. Yeah. It ain't going to get no better for you. Yeah. You got to learn how to be unbothered in the chaos. That's when you grow. That's when you develop. When you learn how to be unbothered. You know the greatest gift in the world is not being able to care. Not being able to care. And listen, one of the worst statements that people say to you that you ain't without when you, when you, when you walk away. You know the worst thing somebody can say to you is, take care. 
You don't even live in what they're saying. Take care. Take care for what? Care for what? Jesus walked in the house of Mary and Martha, and Mary immediately comes to Jesus' feet while Jesus is talking. Martha is doing other things that she thinks that she's supposed to be doing. Jesus, and she gets mad at Jesus for not telling Mary to help her out with the kitchen and stuff. Run the house. He said, Martha, you're cumbered about with much care. Meaning that you care too much. You got too much other stuff going on right now that you can't stop doing what you're doing because you care too much. You care about what has to happen. And a lot of times, can I teach you? One of the issues, and you wouldn't believe it, is that you and I care too much. Amen. You know what? Listen, listen. Why do, I, why do I say that? He says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. So, Jesus, can you, you, you trying to tell me that Jesus is telling me not to care? Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, the fact that you care is your biggest weakness in the kingdom of God. Yeah. The fact that you care is your biggest weakness. Because yeah. I, can, I, can I teach you something a lot of people don't know? The devil attacks things that you what? Care about. Yeah. So when Jesus says that he has to love me more than he loved father, mother, sister, brother, he said you got to love me more and you can't care about nothing. Yes. But he didn't say don't love people, he said don't care about it. You know what care is? It's, it's too much investment into something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're too invested. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. He said you can't be my disciple and be too invested in something else. Exactly. He says, you know, when you're dealing with stocks and all this bond, he said, you got too many shares and stuff here. Mm -hmm. You're too invested there. Yeah. Abraham, let me get your son back because ever since I've given it to you, you care too much about it. Oh, get blessed. Yeah. Amen. God says, when you were single, you served me different. Somebody get blessed. Yeah. Yeah. God said, you ain't served me good in that relationship. Yeah. God said, I got to break it up so you can get back to me. God said you ain't serving me good in your marriage, so I had to do something there to get, you know. Because you used to care a lot about me before. He says like that. He talks like that, right? You care too much about her. You care too much about him. You care too much about that job. You care too much about them kids. The kids, yeah, you care too much about them. Care too much about him. Care too much about her. Yeah. You can't even live your life because you care whether yeah. they're going to take the keys, they're going to take the money, they're going to walk out the house. God said you care too much. Yeah. 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 Teach you, sometimes we care too much. Yeah. You know why we care too much? We're trying to stop the inevitable, the inevitable from happening. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. Mm. Now what a woman, strong woman say, I'm not going through your phone. I'm not checking up on you. I don't care enough. Yeah. Miss Sarah coughed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, Miss Sarah. Let me teach you. The problem is, is that we care to stop the inevitable from happening. You ever get in a relationship and say, man, I wish I didn't care so much. I want my care back. I'm too, and I'm mad that I care so much. Yes. I wish I could turn these feelings off. Yes. And see, that's what God was teaching. He says that's why you can't serve God and man. Yeah. You care too much. So if I'm the devil, I attack what you care about. Because yes. that'll always be your distraction. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hey, you know some people that come to church this morning because of something they're going through? Yeah. yeah. Something they dealing with. Somebody stopped them from coming to church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I had to get the kids and had to do stuff with mom. I had to do this. You came too much. Yeah. Jesus said, yeah. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. Let that situation be what it's going to be. Yeah. You come serve. Yeah. 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 Well, I couldn't come to church because I left out this morning. He was still here. And I don't know what he's going to do while I'm gone. <laughs> So I didn't come in church. Couldn't leave without him. 
We couldn't leave without her. When I left, when I woke up this morning, she was still in bed, and uh, I couldn't come to church and leave her there. I was gonna come, but I ain't had nothing for where I ain't want coming in late because I ain't want people. You care too much. You care way too much. Yeah. Amen. Good God. The, the, the Good opinions God. of other people have hindered you. Yes. And guess what? Oh, oh, guess what the devil was telling you? Um, God about Job. He said, you know what? Job love you, but he cared about his stuff. That's what God said, man, you can touch all his stuff, he's still gonna care for me. Yeah. The devil said, I bet he won't. I see where he polished that car. Yeah. I see where he loved that woman. He loved that money, he be counting it. Look how he counted it right there. Yeah. He loved the shop. Yeah. Loved his haircut. Yeah. He cared. Yeah. God said, take everything we have. Yeah. I'm gonna show you what he cared about. Yeah. Amen. 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 That was I can't. Because you got to have protection on everything you care about. God says, guess what? I'm going to move ahead to protection. And you can touch what he care about. And I'm going to show you what he really care about. Oh, man. You, you, you know what your relationship is with God when he touched what you care about. But you still at his feet. You ain't never had to go to work mad. You ain't never cried all the way to work. Yeah. See, I tell you what, your bills will motivate you to, you know, yeah. get to work. Yeah. See, a lot of times when he's telling you to cast all your care upon him, he's telling you to let go of interest and investments in something else and continue to move on. Yeah. You know, people say all the time, you act like you don't care. No. It's not that I don't care. I can't afford to be invested. Amen. Listen Amen. with the spirit. That's how it is. It's not that I don't care. Amen. Connie, I care. Yeah. I can't afford to be invested. Yeah. Amen. Oh, what does that mean? You're saying so much right there, Pastor Q. You act like you don't care because you can't afford to be invested. Amen. Yeah, because the investment in debt is going to hinder me. Yeah. something that always baffled me. Yeah. We tell the story about Lot coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah and he let his wife go, hear her hand go, who turned to a pillar of salt and kept walking like he didn't care. Mm, yeah. It looked like Lot didn't care. Yeah. Lot said, I can't be invested. Yeah. I do care. Yeah. I do have feelings, but I can't be invested. Yeah. Amen. 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 What Al Pacino say in the movie Heat? When you feel the heat, you got to be willing to walk out in what, 45, 30 seconds when the heat is coming? He says, I'm not, you know what he basically was saying? I'm not invested in anything. When the heat comes, I'm getting up out of there. And I don't care who with me. Lot said, I care for my wife, but my investment is in God. I care for my kids, I care for my family. But my investment is in God. Where is your investment? Jesus says you can't love me and love man also. He said where a man treasure is, that's where his heart going to be. He burned that house down. You trying to run back in the house and get stuff, man. Listen, my investment or my investor will replenish everything that's burnt. I don't got to go back for it. Why did Adam take from the tree with Eve? He cared too much. He was more invested in the woman than he was in the man who gave him the woman. You know what God told Adam? You cared too much for her. He said, God, I love her. I said, he said, I didn't tell you not to love her. I said, not to be invested. God, you want to take back Ishmael? I mean, Isaac? You gave me Isaac. I, I'm Abraham. I waited 99 years for this son, yeah. and you gonna ask for him back? Yeah. I love him. I care for him. God says I love Jesus too, but I love, but I knew what the return yeah. on my investment. Yeah. 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 Jesus up on the cross. God, why have thou forsaken me? Yeah. Yeah. God says not that I don't care. 
I have a deeper investment. He says, Jesus, if I take you off the cross, I can't get my investment. My investment is the people. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men of you. He says, I can sacrifice you because of the investment. I can get you back. Listen to what he's saying. You're um, giving you up for an investment. Because there's interest on your life. When you die, I'm going to be able to bring people in because of you giving up your life. That's why Jesus said, Father, it would be possible that this cup pass with me, but not my will, let your will be done. He says, I care, but I know what's invested. I care about dying. I care about dying, but I know I'm your investment. And if, and if I don't, if I don't go to the cross, you can't get them. There's a greater investment. He says, "I give you beauty for ashes," because there's a greater investment. He says, "I save you because there's a greater investment." I want you because there's a greater investment. Yeah, amen. He says, guess what? It ain't about you. It's about who I'm going to inquire yeah. or who I'm going to receive based yeah. off of you giving up your life. He amen. says, you're worth the investment. Amen. That's good God. Good God. You know, a good businessman tell you don't invest enough and they ain't going to bring you back no money. Yeah. 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 He says he gave one five talents, one two talents, one one talent. He says, I'm going to give you something. I want to see what my investment is when I get back. Yeah. When he got back, the one that had five had ten. The one that had two had four. The one who had one did nothing. He yeah. said, where's my investment? Yeah. What have you done with what I've given you? Yeah. Where is your fruit? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, I didn't come back to see how big your church was. I came back to see what did you do with what I gave you. Mega church say, Pastor, they're gonna say, Jesus, look at all I've given, look at all I have been given. All the people I've bought you. Yeah. Jesus said, all the people belong to you. None of them say. Yeah. Them all your members. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. The mega church say, look at all the people I've got for Jesus. Jesus said, all them people belong to you, they don't belong to me. Depart from me, works of iniquity, I never knew yeah. thee. Yeah. Amen. You ever have somebody show up to your birthday party and cook out with some people you don't know? Yeah. Look at all the people I bought to come celebrate you. No, you bought everybody to eat. Yeah. Yeah. All the plus ones. All the plus ones. They didn't come here for me. Yeah. You promised them something. Yeah, I love what people say. Come on over there. They got a lot of food. They got food. They got drinks. Yeah. I mentioned one thing about whose house it is. Yeah. I don't know who house it would be. Charles Manson. Ain't that a good friend? Man, come on to my cousin's house. He got food, drinks, and the game, and everything on. Oh, for real? I'm coming. Took a whole sociopath over there. Yeah. But I came based off of what was promised. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what I'm saying. That's why they promise you so much. Yeah. Everybody in church right now off a promise. Because somebody in their church told them what they passed and said they're going to do. It's based off a promise. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. Jesus said, guess what? You got a lot of people you promised stuff to that don't know me. Yeah. And it's your fault Amen. that they don't know me. Because you preach to get them here and not to heaven. Yeah. I tell you something I want to see change in 2020? Yeah. Let's stop inviting people to church and give them an invitation to heaven. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's, 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 let's put the uh, priorities together. Yes. Yes. Let's make my first invitation to salvation. Yes. Let's make my second invitation to church. Yes. Can we do that? Yeah. Amen. My first invitation. Yeah. Salvation. Yeah. My second invitation is my church. Because somebody going to die before they get to church off my invitation. Let's make my first invitation salvation. My second invitation, your church home. Learn how to do that. 
Because a lot of people come to church for me and you. Yeah. And I come to church for him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think the worst thing as a pastor to know that I've sent in ministry. No, I think the worst thing to, would be to know as a pastor to know that I sat in ministry and, and looked at the same people every Sunday. Yes. And they won't be the people I see in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Would, wouldn't that be something else? Yeah. Wouldn't it be something to know that I've pastored a church of people that's not going to heaven? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I remember I watched the movie Left Behind and the pastor didn't go to heaven. He got left behind. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even believe it. It was just a job for him. Yeah. You must understand, all of us are not preaching salvation. This is our job. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hey, next time you ask a pastor, this actually, somebody asked me this one time before, and I thought it was great teaching, man. Somebody says, is pastoring your job or is pastoring your lifestyle? Yeah. And you think about that one day, that's when I really got into the teachings. Mm. A man told me, he said, pastoring can't be your job because people quit jobs every day. Amen. People are always looking for new jobs. Yeah. And he said, sometimes jobs don't pay enough, Q. He said, passing has to be your life. Yeah, yeah. It can't be your job. Right. Because mm -hmm. people are always looking for a better job, better yeah. pay. Mm -hmm. But people, he says, pastoring has to do something that you love to do and you would do it for free. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How many things would you do for free that you just love to do? You know, I hear people say, I will cook because I just love to cook. Somebody told me, I don't know if it's a great truth or not, that your food tastes better when you love to do it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Somebody said your greens and your mac and cheese hit different <laughs> when you love to do it. Yes. But when you got good greens and mac and cheese and got to make it for somebody's baby shower, they're not as good as your mac and cheese and yes. greens that you make yes. when you want to do it. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. The same mac and cheese I had on the house. Yeah. But it ain't made with love. I didn't want to be up making the mac and cheese. I normally only make a portion for me. It don't taste like your mac and cheese. That, that song your mac and cheese. She didn't want to make it. She didn't want to be there. See the difference? You preach like this your job. Not like you love to do it. Yeah. And that's why souls ain't being saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Don't nobody listen. We don't want no storeboard tater salad, right? <laughs> we know the difference in the storeboard. Yeah. Yeah, right? Storeboard mac and cheese. Yeah. Storeboard pig tater salad. Yeah. Storeboard sermon. <laughs> Fresh on <off> YouTube. <laughs> Preaching yeah. somebody else's sermon. Yeah. You ain't doing nothing past the preaching the sermon you heard on YouTube this morning. <laughs> Spinning that gun up a little bit. I'm hip to you, man. You ain't really got no anointing. You preach a somebody else's sermon. Amen. I watch you long enough. I know. <laughs> you guys just keep recycling them same old messages. Yeah. You ain't got no fresh anointing. Yeah. Can't preach without your notes anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Get your notes. Go ahead. Get your notes. <laughs> Stuff you written down in the PowerPoint. <laughs> let me show you how to do this thing. Let me show you how to close this Bible and let that anointing just pull all over you. <laughs> you ain't done without that old organ here. Without notes. Yeah. Didn't need yeah. notes. Yeah. Amen. It was in them. Yeah. Set up all night, wrote a whole sermon, something you don't even live. <laughs> <laughs> I watched LeBron James give his speech to Lincoln Nation for COVID. And you know what he told me? He says, Man, it's going to be robbery if I read off this script. Yeah. I'm going to just go off the heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know what he was saying? 
it's going, I'm going to rob y'all if, right, if I read what's written down for me yeah. to say. Yeah. Somebody thought yeah, it's a disservice to yeah. you to write, to, to give yeah. you what was written down. Yeah. That's when people like rappers, they like freestyle. Let me get freestyle. Yeah. We hear nothing you wrote. Let me hear something that comes straight from your heart. Where you at right now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I heard a joke one time. They said, well, Pastor has to write his message down because that's not who he really is. Yeah. So yeah. he, he got to read back off the script. Mm, yeah. If he preaches for the heart, he preaches his own sin. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful, Q. Wow. Good God. Can't preach from the heart. Yeah. Might tell on myself. Yeah. Might slip up and say knackers. Hey, that's it real quick, right? The Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? That lady didn't mean to say niggas, right? But she says it all the time, right? And the problem is that it's like when I curse. I don't mean it, but since I curse periodically, it comes out. So, I don't know her name, but I will vouch and say she did not mean to say niggas on national TV. But she says niggas when she's not on TV. And it slipped up. Because things that you say frequently, yeah. your mind, yeah. it's like when you text and the words that you always use pop up, yeah. niggers popped up in her mind. <laughs> and the thing about it, it came out when she got excited. Yeah. So that means when she's not at work or yeah. a broadcasting group, yeah. she just emphatically yeah. saying niggers when she get excited. Yeah. The problem is, yeah. niggers yeah. came out at the wrong time. So truthfully, I believe she made a mistake. Yeah. But from the abundance of the heart, the yeah. mouth speaks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Listen, yeah. how many times do we change yeah. a curse word in our mind yeah. for another word? Yeah. Trust me, when I'm talking to you, yeah. the curse word is one to come, but I'm in church. Yeah. So I know I can't say that. So the words are coming to my mind and I'm yeah. doing differentiation of the picking yeah. on the right word to say as I'm talking right now. So she got so excited about yeah. the broadcast yeah. and niggers came out yeah. between yeah. Lakers and Knicks and she got mixed up. But she won but on a daily basis, she's on her car, she says niggers all the time. Did she make a mistake? Yes. But on a daily basis, she says niggers. Yes. Amen. Amen. I talk to people all the time at work. They come to my job. They say, man, it's got damn crackers. And I'm like, huh? like, I mean, you know, not, you know, you know what I mean. They didn't mean to say that. But it, because they say it when they're not at work, oh, it comes out at the wrong time. I told you a long time ago, you don't have a problem cursing. You have a problem with your heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. David says, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. You don't have a cursing problem, you have a heart problem. Yes. Amen. That means that your heart is pushing words to your mind and is distributing faster to your, your tongue yes. than you can correct it. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. That's why. Listen, that's why when you grow in God and you want to curse somebody out and you shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Because the reason why you yeah. showed up, because I don't, if, because Mama said if I don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Yeah. And I'm about to curse you out. Yeah. And I don't even, and my mind is not generating any nice phrases at the moment. Yeah. I'm all out of order of yeah. anything nice to say. Yeah. So I must remove myself from this conversation. Because yeah. what I'm getting ready to say, you are not going to be able to forgive me. So I'm going to shut up. I'm closing my email. I'm going to stop texting you. I'm going to get off the phone. That is me showing you growth. It's not that I'm being quiet. My mind has not. Listen. I'm not being quiet. My heart will not allow me to say anything nice at this point. Amen. 
So she didn't mean to say nigger. She didn't. Yeah. But she says niggers yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So guess what happens? Watch what you say in your secret place. Yeah. 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 See, let me show you sometimes too. You don't even have to say it in shows. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. See, the thing about it is, what I felt, what people, reason why she was five is not because she called him a nigga. She felt he was a nigga. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes, you know the thing about black people, we was having a conversation the other day, we're so offended by being called a nigga instead of being treated like a nigga. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you, what is your, what is your preference? Right. Yeah. Right. You, you okay being treated like a nigga. Yeah. But you want to run to the bull when they call you a nigga. Yeah. You've been doing nigga stuff all week. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Nigga stuff is being ignorant, not being black. You've been doing nigga stuff all week, but then get out offended when somebody yeah. called you a nigga. Yeah. But you've been working like a nigga for them people all week long, allowing yeah. them to treat you like a nigga. Yeah, amen. Allow your friends and people to call acting like a nigga all week, and yeah. when somebody called you, you offended. But it's okay when they treat you like one. Yeah. Treat me like it. Don't yeah. call me one. Yeah, amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I ain't no hoe, but live like one. Yeah. Yeah. Right, friend? Ain't that what we do? Yeah. That's a good point. Don't call me no nigga. Yeah. 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 That's all right. We just treat you like one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Willie Lynch. <laughs> Willie Lynch. Don't call them niggas. Break them. Break them like you break a horse. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> break them like you break a horse. Beat, beat the, beat the woman and, 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 and beat the man. Make, uh, uh, demasculate the man in front of the woman. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to call them niggas. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to enslave them. Enslave their mind. Yeah. Treat them like niggas. Yeah. You ain't got to call them that. The new concept is not call you a nigga. Just treat you like one. Yeah. Saying Kobe Bryant, if that woman called a nigga, she felt he was a nigga when he did his thing in Denver. Yeah, she, they, he was all type of niggas. Mm -hmm. That's what she meant. Yeah. That's the way she felt. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't call us niggas. Mm -hmm. Don't call me that. Yeah. Just treat me like one. I'm okay being treated like one. Yeah. But don't call me no nigga. And ran off on this message. How much time I got? <laughs> but listen, I'm, we started on talking about, you know, being used by God and went somewhere else. But listen to what he says. We in Malachi chapter 3, for those who just joined in, and this whole my little rant, let me bring you back where we were. I don't know where the civil rights pastor you came from, but yeah. Malachi chapter, he says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me in this says the Lord of hosts, and I will not, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pull you out such blessings that there, that there will not be room enough to receive. So you know what God is saying? God is God said, listen, give me something to work with. That's what he's saying. He's not asking for your time. He's asking for something to work with. He's asking for your availability to be able to use. That's why it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present, right? Listen to what the scripture says in Romans chapter 12, 1. That you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. He says, listen, I just need you pre to present yourself you ever hear people um, sing that song in church? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, try to true. You, people are basically saying, Lord, uh, use me as a vessel for you. For you, yes. Yeah. That's what it's saying. God says, listen, you're, you're, you're tithing your offering. I'm asking for you to be a vessel, and a vessel is something that holds my things. Oh, man, get me that. He says, listen, know ye not that you are the temple of the living God, and he who will found the temple of God, God will destroy him. So God says, you're a vessel. I'm going to pour my stuff into you. And as I'm pouring my stuff into you, I want you to give it out because you're the vessel that I need to use to be able to get them. God says, I don't jump out of heaven and say, hey, take me as Lord and Savior. He says, I need you. Yeah. 
Be my vessel. Yeah. Be a blessing. He told Abraham, he says, listen, not only will I bless you, I will make you a blessing. He says, I'm making you a vessel that I can use. I'm God. I'm unseen. You can't see me, but they can see you. Yeah, amen. So God says, take what I have given you and use it for, and win them for me. Yeah. When I learned to understand that concept, that I was being used by God, it, it, it changes your attitude and how you deal with people. Because, like, I know I can cuss you out, right? Yeah. I know I can slap you, push you down, strong. Yeah. I can do that, right? Yeah. But when I understand that I'm a vessel, I know now I'm being used to win people for God. Yeah. And I know that if I don't die to myself and get me together, I'm going to lose people for God. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. Do you know every time I act, uh, you know what? I'm losing people for God. Though it feels good to check somebody, put them in their place. I lose people. Yeah. But when I'm humble, uh -huh. and I don't repay evil with evil, but repay yeah. evil with good, yeah. I win souls. Right. Yeah. Can I teach you the, 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 um, <clears throat> the, the mentality of Christianity that nobody knows? You're going to feel bad when you <laughs> win people. Yeah. It's going to feel bad to do the right thing. It's going to feel good to do the right thing. The wrong thing. Yeah. It feel good to tell somebody off and tell them about they self, but guess what I've done? I just pushed them away from God, especially if it's coming from me, yeah, a man. vessel. Yeah. But when I allow them to get off on me and I shut up and be the bigger person, yeah. I win for him. He wins. Yeah. If I go back and forth, he loses. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's why he says, "Do not reward." He says, "Do not repay evil with evil." But repay evil with good, and in doing so, you should pour a heap of coals of fire over their head. Yeah, amen. It feels bad to be the bigger person. Yeah. Feels good to cut your tail out. Amen. Oh, that feels so good. <laughs> but I've just what? He, he says, listen, gives give space or give place unto wrath. Amen. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. He yeah. says, give place unto wrath. You know what that means? God says, give me the place to deal with them. Go sit in your place and let me deal with them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Listen, yeah. sometimes it's hard as a Christian to let God deal with my enemies. Because yeah. he's just not doing it fast enough. Yeah. But he will. Yeah. Yes, he will. And guess what? You know, you, know, you, know, you know what type of person God wants me to be? He wants me as a person, right, to let him deal with my enemies, but then he don't let me boast about it. Like I said, he don't want me to do that. He, he, he wants me to back away, let him deal with it, and then forgive him. But I want him to deal with him, and I say, see, I told you my God was going to get you. Yeah, amen. Good God. Like, um, what's her name? Silly? What's her name from Color Purple? Yeah. I want to respond like her. Ain't no good gonna come from you to you be right by me. That's how we want to respond. Right? Yeah. I want to respond like that. Oh, see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't touch God's anointing. Do his prophets no harm. Talk yeah. about me. Watch what's gonna happen to you. Yeah. You ain't been nothing since you left word movies. You ain't nothing but bad luck. <laughs> I want to say stuff like that. I do. Say stuff like that. <laughs> but what God said, Q, forgive him. Still love him. Still yeah. pray for him. But I just want to tell people about themselves. Right? That's what we want to say. God said, Q, ain't no glory in that. He said, the glory is, is that when that you know that they talked about you, he yeah. says, pray for those who despitefully use you. Yeah. Curse Amen. you. Amen. Post about you. Post about you. He want me, you want me to be hugging on people I know talking about me, God? I say, yeah. 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 Act like you ain't seen the post. Yeah. Act like you ain't heard the conversation. He says, listen, people know you by how you love other people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's how they know me. He said, God is love, and people should know you by the way you love other people. Amen. Amen. God said, I don't deal with your enemy for you to boast about it. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you what, man. 
Do you know how many people I done seen God take care of my business for for me? Yeah. And I've had my own little silent victory parties. Yeah, amen. I never said nothing. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm saying, like, that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You ever have somebody do you wrong and come yeah. back? Yeah. And you yeah. help them, but in your mind, you be saying, uh -huh. that's what you get. That's exactly yeah. what you get. Yeah. Amen. Shouldn't did wrong by me. Shouldn't have yeah. been talking about me. Yeah. Now yeah. look at you. Yeah. Amen. Ain't had luck since you left. Yeah. Amen. I can't say that though. Because God always deal with the people that do me wrong. Yeah. Amen. But He want me to just keep living. Yeah. Amen. Can I teach you something? I don't know if you got this type of time, bro. Inquire about some people that did you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't doing so good. And guess when they punishment come? When your healing comes. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see people get dealt with? Get healed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So people do something to you, get healed, learn from it. Yeah. Grow from it. Yeah. Move on. Yes. Amen. Good God. Good God. I bet you look back, they ain't doing so good. Ain't doing so good. Yeah. All the mascara in the world can't hide with God doing that. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Now have no luck, yeah. no blessings. Amen. And guess what? All it took for you to remove yourself, because a lot of times, listen, let me tell you what God showed me the other day. I'm going to get ready to close back. God says, listen. I had to get Lot and his family up out of Sodom and Gomorrah before I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. I couldn't do it while they was there. Yeah. Right, right. God says the punishment I have to issue on some of the people that have harmed you, I couldn't do nothing until you left. Yeah. Man. When you decided to leave and remove yourself, here comes the fire and brimstone. You got to get away from people and yeah. say, I got to let God deal with you. Yeah. Amen. Because listen, I'm, I'm, I'm hindering his chastisement. Yeah. 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 Sometimes we hinder God's chastisement by being in the way. Yeah. You see what I'm saying, Frank? Yeah. Sometimes God can't do what he want to do because you in the way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God can't bless you because you're stuck there. Yeah. And you in the way of your own blessing. Yeah. You got to move yourself out. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. The angel told Lot, he said, listen, we can't do nothing until you out of here. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Yeah. You know, he, he told the angels when they came to get Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, man, we can't do nothing until you're out of here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We've been given an assignment. We can't burn this junk down until you yeah. out of here. Yeah. You know the blessed thing? We, you know the Bible said that we have entertained angels on the web? The angels came into Sodom and Gomorrah to get. Oh, man. Yeah, amen. Christians, I, they, they don't read their Bible, Frank. It said the angels went into Sodom and Gomorrah to get Lot and his family. That means angels go into whole houses, some crack houses. Yeah. Hey, I always thought the angels was in church. Yeah. Them the false angels. Yeah. Amen. He sent angels into a place where all hell was breaking loose. All type of stuff. Yeah. Listen what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I will leave the 99 and come out of the one. He sent angels into Sodom and Gomorrah. That's like Christians going to strip clubs. Yeah. Connie said this morning, I'm up here reading, I go to Go-Go's. Guess what? Yeah. If Connie and that Go-Go and J.Y. cranking and somebody run into a situation and they run into her, uh -huh. she got the word. Yeah. Amen. 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 Ain't none of your parishioners in there, Pastor. Amen. Amen. You told them they couldn't go see junk, y'all. Yeah. Pastor, because you said they couldn't
went to go see the jump job, a man gets stabbed to death, but he takes his last breath and wanted to receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. You ain't got no members. Yeah. 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 I'm not telling you to go to the strip club. I'm not telling you to go see the jump job. I'm saying that we ain't got no saved people in none of them places. Yeah. 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 Oh, I tell you what, man. Why do you think they're trying to equip everybody with CPR, man? Yeah. So that somebody knows how to do yeah. the CPR. Yeah. You know what? They're trying to and make sure everybody in the world knows CPR. Yeah. You know what? So if somebody goes into cardiac arrest, yeah. there's somebody there. What if we're in the grocery store yeah. and don't nobody know CPR? Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? The world is equipping people for CPR. Christ is equipping people to know how to present salvation. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, if nobody knows how to do CPR, I'm certain. How many people are going to certify the CPR? Look at that. Like five of us. Just imagine if there's not even five people in the club that's saved. Guess what? All the saved people where? In church. With who? All the saved people. That's right. Everybody who knows what? CPR. Amen. Amen. And all the people that know CPR hang out with healthy people that know CPR. Amen. Amen. Who have good hearts. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If all of us have great hearts and all of us know CPR, there's probably a chance that we're never going to be able to use it. Yeah. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. What if you take us and put us around some bad heart people? Yeah. God. Oh, wow. God. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now I understand why Jesus walking ate with the sinners come. Yeah. He knew CPR. Yeah. 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 You see what it went? Yeah. That's why I don't have any pastor friends and yeah. I don't hang out with church people. Yeah. I know CPR. Yeah. I'm talking spiritually. I hope you get it. Yeah. I don't got to hang out with Christians. Yeah. There's enough of them knowing CPR. Yeah. Let me hang out with the people and one of them drop, yes. I can perform my CPR. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, listen to what he's teaching you. Yes. You, that's why he places you. You know, in the Bible says that no man lights a candle and puts it under a bushel. A, a city southern hill cannot be hid. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men they may see your good works and glorify your Father that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's why you're always the one light in the dark place. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're probably Amen. the only one of your friends that go to church. Yeah. You're probably the only one of your friends right now that's in church. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You're the only one of your friends that knows CPR. Yeah. And guess what? You're the only one that they're going to call on when they need prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Can I tell you why most people are here killing themselves? To be honest, real talk. They didn't have nobody to go to. Yeah, nobody knew CPR. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Depression, anxiety, all these things are happening. You know why people kill themselves? I had nobody to run to. Yeah. Because I didn't know nobody in the room in the room knew CPR. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. We playing church. Yeah. Let me tell you what, Christians. Keep frequenting places outside of church. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, we live in the last days. Do not spend all your time in church. Yeah, amen. You ain't helping nobody. Yeah. I swear you're not. Yeah. If you cut off everybody in the world to go sit with a whole bunch of people that got it together, Jesus says, I came for the sick. Yeah. Those who are healed don't yeah. need a physician. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I know birds of a feather fly together, but doctors hang out with other doctors, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. He said, I need the doctors to start hanging out with the sick people. Yes. Amen. If every doctor hung out with somebody was sick, come on now. Yeah. The problem is, all the doctors hanging together. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We got we, we to gotta get to a place where we are allowed, we can go places and allow our light to shine around yeah. people who don't know God. Yeah. Amen. Christianity is being taught wrong. 
He didn't teach it to be in church on Sunday. Yeah, you come here to get your fuel. You come here to get fed. But then you should be taking what you're getting and going and giving it away. Yes. Man, so what your friends smoke? They yeah. drink. I don't care. Yeah. They adulterers. Yeah. Pedophiles. I don't yeah. know what they are. Yeah. You got the words of eternal life. Yeah. How would you remove yourself from people when you know CPI? Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's like you walking in the room. Y'all know CPR? Nope, I'm out. <laughs> you not gonna save? Nope. Nope, I'm out. Ain't that what we do? Yeah. What church you go? You say? Oh no, nah, I got I got to date somebody. He needs got to go to church. <laughs> Baby girl, sometimes God will send you a man to convert. Yeah. Only. Sometimes he'll send you a woman to convert. Yeah, amen. Amen. God will always send you. A saved man, a saved woman. Yeah, amen. It's false teaching Christianity 101. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank Christians, you, Lord. Christians teach it wrong, women. Yeah. God gonna send you a saved husband, he ain't never told me that. Yeah. He gonna send you a saved wife, he ain't never said that. Yeah. Moses met a woman, an Ethiopian woman, she didn't know nothing about his God. Yeah. Matter of fact, his mother and father, his sisters and brothers didn't even like the fact he was with that Ethiopian woman. Amen. He told the prophet to go marry a, a woman that was caught up in, um, in whoredom, Gomer. Told the prophet that. But you hear church people talking about, oh, I'm waiting for him to send me a good church man, good church woman. Keep waiting. <laughs> yeah. Keep waiting. Yeah. Yeah. He send you, he, he send you something. He may send you something that needs his love. Yeah. And guess what it is? Amen. You rejected it. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You rejected it because it wasn't like you and had the spirit that you had. Yeah. Oh, sometimes we run our blessings away based off conditions. Yeah. But we want to be loved unconditional. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say lower your standards. I said lower your conditions. Yeah. 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 The words are not the same. Yeah. I didn't say lower your standards. I said what? Lower your conditions. A man with three kids, that's not your standards, but he might got the good conditions in his heart. Yes. I don't want no man with kids. But hell, listen, if he take care of his kids, that's your... Yeah. Amen. 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 If she got three kids, she's responsible. Yeah. Amen. I don't want no woman with kids. Yeah. She raised them three kids, now yeah. listen, what you got? Amen. Somewhere she was obedient. Yeah. She was helping with homework. She was cooking and cleaning. Yeah. But you don't want nobody with three kids. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You want something single and unresponsible. Yeah. Listen to it. I didn't say lower your standards. Yeah. Drop your conditions. That's why Jesse didn't be cool. That's why Jesse didn't. That's why Jesse didn't understand. I mean, the prophet didn't understand when he got born down to Jesse house and seven of the sons walked by. He was looking at the standards. Yeah. Oh, they got good standards. It's, it's got to be God's anointed. God said, I ain't chose none of them. Yeah. The man I chose, you ain't going to like his conditions. Yeah. Amen. King David was out back feeding the sheep. Yeah. A sheep boy. Sheep clothing all in sheep stuff all in his head. Yeah. Smelling like outside. Yeah. God said, that's your king. Yeah. Amen. 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 God said, listen, I didn't say lower your standards. Yeah. I said, change your conditions. Yeah. Though that man old greasy mechanic, that's a king. Yeah. That felon, that's a king. Yeah. That stripper, that's a queen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. That man from Nazareth is the Messiah. Yeah. Thank what good can come out of Nazareth? You brought somebody out of Nazareth to be our king and our God yeah. for salvation? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You can find a wife in Southeast. It ain't got to be Bowie. <laughs> we can't never tell our homies, our girls from Southeast. Where's she from? Oh, she's about resting. <laughs> 
ain't no freaks out resting. <laughs> Stop it, cute. She live out Montgomery County. Yeah. Oh, ain't no freaks out there. sleep off this message, but Lord, maybe they wake up and play it again and catch what was in there. Thank you, Father God, for the read the freedom and liberty to be able to teach your word in Jesus' name. I'm Pastor Q. Thank you, God, for tuning in. Amen. Amen. Amen.